You may be seated and go ahead and prosecute. Thank you, Governor. Now, before we take the break, we started watching some of this surveillance footage. Um, you indicate you are familiar with this footage? Yes, ma'am. What is this footage that we're looking at on the screen right here? That would be the, the parking lot at the Nevada, Nevada Walmart store. Um, we're looking at that, the two-tone pickup with the vending machines parked there on the left side. How did you come into possession of this video? I received a copy of that video from uh, Susan Tyler, who works, who is, works for Walmart Loss Prevention. And was that in connection with the, um, the Walmart tag that you provided? Yes, ma'am. And how did it come to be that you came into possession of this specific surveillance footage? Through uh, Ms. Tyler was able to, with the information on the UPC, UPC code, was able to determine that that particular tag that, that I showed her came from the Nevada Walmart store and she was able to, with their system, to come up with a date and a time that that specific tag was scanned through one of their registers there at the store. And on what date was that? I met with Ms. Tyler on uh, the first day of December 2009. Uh, what date was the uh, purchase made? would have been November 8th of 2009. And then after receiving that information, is that when you obtained the video footage? No, no ma'am, I wasn't able to obtain the video. I took, I believe, until January. It took her a while to get the video put together. And so you reviewed this video in January 2010? I believe so, yes ma'am. And at that point, did you have any suspects in mind? Um, based on the information that, that I had been told, uh, I reviewed the video and did develop a suspect at that time, yes ma'am. Now looking at that footage, you indicated already that you recognized a vehicle with a um, machine that looks like in the back. What did you start that machine was? I believe it's, uh, they look like vending machines. I, I can't say for sure, but it, it appears to be two vending machines in the back of the truck. And are you familiar with that vehicle at all? Yes, ma'am, I am. How are you familiar with that vehicle? Um, I believe Mr. Stanglin had a vehicle like that or similar to that vehicle at one time. And did you know Mr. Stanglin? Yes, ma'am, I did. How did you know Mr. Stanglin? When I first employed at, at Vernon County in, in 2000, uh, Mr. Stanglin owned a convenience store just outside the city limits of Nevada. And from time to time, we would have to go to his store and use uh, the uh, equipment that he had to view uh, VHS tapes and stuff like that for gas drive-offs and such things that he that occurred at his store. Do you know Mr. Sanders personally or professionally? A little of both. Uh, and how are you familiar with his vehicle? Not that familiar. I just if if I Nevada is a small town of about eight thousand people. So if you see somebody two or three times, you kind of remember what they drive, and you might see him driving down the road. You might wave at him or, or them or something like that at that time. Now, at the time that you observed the video surveillance, which you said was in January of two thousand ten, um, when you observed this vehicle, were you familiar with it? Yes, ma'am. I believe that I had seen Mr. Stanley in that vehicle uh, prior to that. Now, if we can play just the video, start over.
minutes. Pause right there, detective. Now, officer, um, what observations do you make on that surveillance tape? It would be a gentleman wearing a dark colored shirt, coveralls, uh, carrying an item, attempting to open the door of that vehicle. That's that individual right here? Yes, ma'am. Now, at that point, did you already review the still photographs? Yes, ma'am. And does that individual match the description of the individual that you observed in the still photographs? Yes, ma'am, it does. Detective, if you could just keep playing. <clears throat> I know it's hard to see, but can you determine at all what he appears to be carrying from this surveillance photo? Not in that surveillance photo, photo but from the still photos. Pretty much know what those items are. And based on these still photographs, um, what do you consider those items to be? A bag of ice. to try to obtain further information to the home invasion of Charles and Linda Scott. And how was Mr. Stanglin identified as a suspect? Mr. Stanglin was arrested in, a, in a, another county uh, east of Nevada uh, with a, a suspect or with a person from the state of New Jersey. Did you receive information regarding that arrest? Yes, ma'am, I did. And did you review any reports in connection with that? Review reports? No, ma'am, I did not. <clears throat> now, who applied for the search warrant? I believe it would have been Shane Simmons, ma'am. And were you present when the search warrant was executed on Mr. Sanger's residence? Yes, ma'am, I was. Now, you indicated earlier that you're familiar with Mr. Sanglin um, from prior dealings with him. Do you see Mr. Sanglin in this courtroom today? Yes, ma'am, I do. Can you identify him for the court? 
he will be sitting to my right wearing the blue suit with the white shirt belt. For the record, I identify Mr. Stanglin. Um, in your dealings with Mr. Stanglin in the past, had you known his address? His exact address? No, ma'am, I just knew where his house was. So were you familiar with the residence prior to executing this report? Yes, ma'am. Who was present when the defendant's home was searched? Outside of law enforcement or including law enforcement officers? Including law enforcement officers. What agencies? There would have been the Vernon County Sheriff's Office, the Bates County Sheriff's Office, uh, the CNET Drug Task Force, and I believe three to four individuals in the house or at the residence when we arrived there to uh, serve the search warrant. And why were agencies um, like Bates County and the CNET Drug Task Force present? Vernon County is a small department. Uh, we, a lot of times, if we're going to serve a search warrant, if we feel like we need manpower from other agencies, we call them and request uh, other agencies to come assist us with the search warrants and, and stuff like that. What was your role in connection with the search warrant execution? Initially, when we got there, our my role was to help secure the scene and uh, take anybody into custody that uh, needed to be and try to secure any evidence that might need to be collected. And did you collect any evidence? Uh, evidence was collected, yes ma'am. I do not recall if I personally collected it or if it was collected by another officer. Was any evidence photographed? Yes ma'am, it was. Who photographed that evidence? I did. I'm going to show you a series of photos which have been pre marked S128. Lieutenant, we're going to go through those photographs one by one, but if you can just look through them briefly. Did 
you take all of those photographs? Yes, ma'am. And starting with S128, which you shot in front of you is also on the screen. Can you identify what's in that photograph? Um, it's going to be a, uh, a notebook, a hardback book, um, some photos, and some photos in that deal. And specifically this right here. That is the back of a photo. Uh, it, it has some names and stuff on it. Now if we can move to S129. Okay. I know it's difficult to see on the big screen, but it should be clearer in the photograph you have in front of you. Yes, ma'am. What's the case of the map of the graph? It's a close-up photo of the names that's on the back of the photo from the, the previous photo. And what are those names? Would be Prospect, Silverback, Mom, Brutal, Vendor, Little Dude, Young Blood, dated October 2009. I love them all, is what it says. And if we can go to S130. What is that photograph of? That would be the front side of the last photo. And do you recognize any of the individuals in that photograph? Yes, ma'am, I do. Who do you recognize? Mr. Stanglin is on the far right. Right, here. right there. That would be Billy Barger in the middle. That's Kim Hunter next to him. The subject to her left would be Lonnie Swearns. Uh, the other subject would be Mr. Wydell. Uh, the young man in the red t-shirt would be Derek Stanglin. And I believe that young lady right there in that photo, I believe her name was Jennifer Dove. And now those aren't the names that you just read that were on the back of that photograph. No, ma'am, they were not. And were you, during the course of your investigation, were you able to determine who was who in terms of the names on the back of the photograph and who was depicted in that photograph? I believe I know most of them. I don't, I'm not sure exactly uh, on. Uh, okay. If you're not sure, that's fine. Um, moving on to the next photograph, which is S131. Can you identify that? Document, that photograph? That is a page out of a uh, plat book of a section of Vernon County. And is anything of note depicted in this plat map? I don't, I don't believe if it was on this page or um, another page of the plat book, but uh, one of the pages uh, <coughs> had a small section that had uh, the scandal name on it. Moving on to the next photograph, which would be 132. That's inverted in the photograph there, but it should be okay for one that you have. Can you identify what's in that? That, I believe, if, if I remember correctly, is a, a dresser that was in the master bedroom of the residence. Uh, and there was, that's a, a, a distant shot of papers inside that plastic bag in the dresser drawer. Moving on to the next photograph, which would be S133. <clears throat> Can you identify what's in that photograph? Would be some miscellaneous papers and 
the card that says Hells Angels MC Monk Barger Ambassador Missouri <coughs> with a phone number on it. Looking at S134. Okay, that would be a another shot of the same photo. S135. That is appears to be a uh, male with uh, William Barger's name on it with a Route 3 uh, Box 59A Rich Hill, Missouri address. And S134. Okay, that would be yes. That is a, it appears to be an ownership, transfer of ownership on a, of a handgun uh, from Phil Lasaro to Kim Hunter. Yeah, S137. Do you recognize this in that photograph? Appears to be some phone numbers, man. That is emails uh, that has uh, the name Ralph Barger on it, uh, and I don't, I do not recall to who they were being sent to. We move on to S139. That's more emails. S140. That would be a book uh, written about Sonny Barger. Do you know who Sonny Barger is? Sonny Barger, I believe, was the founding president of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club. S141. That would be a photo of Sonny Barger. And that is a photo of ammunition and other items uh, taken in the garage at the Stangland residence. And where's the ammunition in the photograph? It would be the black box that says Winchester AA on it, the two brown boxes, and the, the, the box on the bottom again at the, on the top shelf. S143. That is a close up. Uh, the item of the ammo. S144. That would be more ammunition and uh, I believe it would be clay pigeons uh, in, in the one box on the bottom left there, right there. And S145. That is a crate with uh, more ammunition in it. Yes, ma'am. Where was this crate found? I don't recall him. S146. That is going to be a shot of uh, 12, gauge, 12 gauge shotgun ammunition. Is that right over here in this box? Yes, ma'am. S147. That is a photo of showing the ammunition setting on the the little nightstand right there. S148. That is a bag of, of uh, I believe to be handgun ammunition. S149. That is a photo of a safe in the residence. Do you know what type of safe that is? Um, it could be used for a uh, to store uh, handguns or uh, other items in S-150. That's another shot of the, the safe with the door open all the way, showing that the safe was empty. And finally, S-151. That's the photo of the inside of a, of a gun safe that is, uh, doesn't have any guns in it. And is this the inside of the same photograph that you saw previously, which is one S-150? 
No, ma'am. This is a, I believe this is a stand-up gun safe, which would be taller. And the other safe was a, a smaller safe that was built into the wall, if I remember correctly. And you took all of these photographs to indicate it? Yes, ma'am. Were all of these photographs taken at the Bellfenwood's residence on January 11, 2010? Yes, ma'am. And are they an accurate depiction of the evidence as you observed it on that day? Yes, ma'am. Now, there are several photographs of gun safes, or safes that could be used to, to hold guns, as well as this one which you indicated was a gun safe. Um, were any weapons or guns found in that residence? No, ma'am, there was not. Were any weapons eventually located? Yes, ma'am, there was. Do you know by who? I believe they were seized by uh, uh, Chief Deputy Justin Moreland of the Bates County Sheriff's Department and uh, Will Perryman, a member of the uh, Drug Task Force. Where were those weapons found, to your knowledge? At a residence located at 303 East Hickory in Nevada, Missouri. Did you eventually process those weapons as your role? Um, yes, ma'am. I want to show you what has been pre marked S152 identification. <coughs> you can take a look at this photograph. And if you could identify that photograph for the order. These were the guns that were, that I was told was seized from the residence. Uh, on East Hickory Street in Nevada. Did you take that photograph? I honestly can't say whether I took this photograph or not, ma'am. Do you know where this photograph was taken? Do you recognize? It's in the 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 evidence room at the Bourbon County Sheriff's Office. Did there come a point where you well is that an accurate depiction of the weapons in the evidence room at the Bourbon County Sheriff's Office? Yes, ma'am. There is the two cases that are shown here, the brown case and the black case. Uh, yes, there's there's also two shotguns, uh, one shotgun in each case uh, on those those two cases this, that wasn't taken out of the cases when the photo was taken. And based on the totality of the investigation, were you able to determine who the owner of these weapons were? Yes, ma'am. And who's that? We believe these guns belong to Doug Stanglin. The one shotgun uh, would be two to the right of the black case. Uh, right there, that that has the name Stanglin on the on the gun. Were you able to observe that on the day that the evidence was placed in the room? In the evidence room? Yes, ma'am. That was on the gun when, when the, the the guns were seized. What else, if anything, did you do in connection with this investigation? You know what, this may be a good spot to break as it's 1230, so we will break and resume at 1.30.